Good morning, evening or afternoon and welcome back to another Park Run review where today we are off to Ashton Court Park Run. So Ashton Park Run is located on the southwest side of Bristol, so another Bristol Park Run. We've got four or five now on the channel which is in the Bristol sort of area, Bath area and today this one is all a two and a half kilometres going uphill followed by a two and a half kilometres going downhill so it's a bit of a struggle this one but it's all on well made ground so don't worry about uh, trail shoes you might want to take trail shoes actually come and think about it because there is a few little sort of pebbles and stuff which you can slip on as you're pushing it uphill and also there's some potholes as well on the course so if you are thinking of going i'll probably actually say trail shoes in the end i initially said normal shoes but no take trail shoes yes yeah, so as i was saying it's two and a half kilometers going uphill so that first push is quite difficult so definitely not one for your pb because you have to do two and a half uphill then two and a half downhill so not ideal for your personal bests however there's no tight turns apart from the one new turn at the end which we'll look at when we go through the course also on wet days and the cold icy days the potholes do fill with water so especially when it snows and things like that it's cold you'll slip on the uh, potholes so you need to be careful also you might get wet as well if they're filled with water yet again with it being just on the outskirts of bristol it is a very busy run so for anyone that is trying to get their fastest run at ashton court park run make sure you get towards the front because otherwise you're a little bit slow at the start but it just spread out quite quickly and the path is quite wide it's more like a service road to be honest it's two two lane service road so it's quite a wide path but it is still very busy but before we get into it if you don't know what a park run is it is essentially a 5k run ran by a group of volunteers who marshal the events they time the events they do all the tokens and stuff at the end and then once you get to the finish line you show your personalized barcode with their finish token and they'll give you a position and a time of your run now you know what a park run is let's take a look at the course so you're going to start here just next to the arts mansion on the ashton court estate you're going to make your way around in sort of like a curve past lots of sort of tree areas they're all hard standing past where the bristol balloon festival is and you're going to make your way up past the follow deer park towards the treetop high ropes adventure in bristol so once you get past there you're going to keep going up and then you'll get to a junction you're going to turn left at that junction and this is where you'll start seeing some potholes which you can slip on and things like that so be careful in this area before making your way slightly higher so this is all an incline right now some of it's steeper than other bits but you're going to go past the ashton court mountain bike trail and then towards justin meadow where you're going to do a u-turn and you're going to come all the way back down so it's all back downhill again being careful of the potholes and then i'll probably say this area here is where the steepest area is and then you're going to come back to the end by the arts mansion although the whole course is within ashton court estate you do have to be careful for vehicles and things like that i'm pretty sure on the day there are volunteers at every sort of junction where vehicles could go just warning them that there are going to be some runners so if they could wait a few minutes or so now the ashton court park run stats so these are incredible times bearing in mind they've gone up two and a half k before coming back down you'll find that you go down so much quicker it's really good fun to be fair on the way down but the fastest male was Jarleth McKenna with a time of 15 minutes and 46 seconds, which is incredible. And the fastest female being Charlotte Emily Taylor Green with a time of 18 minutes and 4 seconds. Two very fast times. On average, you'll see about 336 runners. So again, very busy one. And the average time is usually around 28 minutes and 43 seconds, which I actually think is less than Omeo Park, which we reviewed last week. And now my stats. So not as much has changed since we've hit winter. We're on nine park runs currently. This is going to be number 10 with my best finish position being fourth. That's a lonely jar. The fastest times have been five arches in third with 23.25. Evesham in second with 23 minutes and one second. And Summerdale the Pavilion on top still with a time of 22 minutes and 32 seconds. So pretty happy with those times. As long as I beat 25, I'm usually pretty happy. So let's get into the run. So you can see just how many people ran. I think in the end it was 441 runners, which is mad. You can see all the dogs as well. So if you do want to run with a dog, don't forget you can take some dogs to this course. I don't think you can take push chairs though. It may be wrong, but let's get into the run now. And there we go. So we have just started. As you can see, loads of people there in front of us. So we're going to run around on the frosty grass. If it was wet, it'd be probably a bit boggy. So I wouldn't do that if it was wet. But because it's frosty, it's nice and frozen. Able to run around, just get to a position where they're running at our pace. And then we'll slot back in onto the path. So it's a decent start, but don't go ahead too quickly at the start. Because you have got a two and a half kilometer hill to climb. 
So that's the grassy area. Narrows down. There's the first junction. We've slipped there onto the path now. So now we're on hard standing for the whole of the rest of the run. But as you can see, there's still loads of people on the left-hand side. That is the deer area. So you may see some deers on the, on the day that we ran. Unfortunately, there was no deers there, but you may see some deers. So that would be very nice. You may also have noticed that I've just had my hair cut, so uh, the first bit was recorded with pre-haircut and this bit's been recorded after haircut, just in case you think everyone thinks I've changed. So you might be able to see that at the moment it's a, maybe a slight decline to be honest, but we're going to be making our way to uh, an incline in just a second. It's probably pretty flat at this point. So there we go. We are now up to the incline. We're going to start going uphill. And just a note to anyone that has got bad knees, I actually did injure my ACL after this. So I got an inflamed ACL, had to sit out for four weeks as well. So that was pretty frustrating. So just when you're with bad knees, maybe don't run this one or take it very gently going up and downhill because you don't want to be in the same position where I am where I'm having to wait four weeks until I can run again. But don't worry, we'll still have some videos because I'm going to be volunteering for the next few weeks. Also, another thing to be careful of is speed bumps. There are a few little speed bumps on this track. I think we saw a few back there. Not too sure if there's going to be any more that crop up, but do be careful of speed bumps. You don't want to trip over the speed bump and land face first onto the floor. You can really start to feel it in your quads right now as well going up the hill. So uh, it's getting quite difficult. There's one of the examples of the speed bumps there. Just make sure to step over that. You don't want to trip over. And then you're just going to keep going. It was a really nice day, to be fair. Even though it's really frosty, it was blue sky. So it's that perfect weather for a run, I think. Blue skies, nice and frosty. And then there was also a hot air balloon in the background, which you could watch go up. I think another thing that you need to remember as well is that because this is all uphill, you're going to be coming straight back down this. So once you've got up to that top, it is all downhill from there, which makes it 10, 20 times easier. And it'll be interesting actually when we watch this back now, what time I got going uphill and then what time I got going downhill because I felt like I was sprinting pretty much downhill, but I felt like I was going very slowly trying to push my way up the hill. There are also some great views on the right hand side here as well so on the way back if you want to slow down and take a few photos there are some stunning views over there you can see here this is a car on the left hand side so you've got to be careful of cars i'm pretty sure though that there are people watching to make sure that no cars actually go onto the roads but i'm not uh, someone has to let me in the comments if you do volunteer ashton court park run whether they stop the cars from going on the road because obviously they probably get in the way a lot So we're still going, it's still uphill, it's feeling like a right drag right now, but I was really pleased with myself, really chuffed actually that I didn't ever stop once going uphill. I thought that um, I was going to have to stop and go walk for a moment, but then I got to the U-turn and I was like, oh, that's, that's great because now I'm on my way back down for the rest of it. As you can see, we're just coming up to that junction before the left-hand turn. On the left, you can see loads of people there running across the field. It's, it's not actually on the field, it's on a hard standing path, which you'll see in a second. But this is that four-way junction. We're just about to get up to it now, and then we're going to turn left. And this is where the potholes begin. So you need to be careful now of potholes on the ground. You'll see in a minute it turns there to some gravelly paths. So maybe trail shoes is the option, like I said, at the start for this area here, especially because you're going uphill, so you're pushing all the stones back as well. So it's probably better to wear, wear trail shoes for this run. Also, another reminder to stay on the left-hand side unless you are overtaking a move to the right, because just in a minute, you'll see some people running downhill, so you don't want to collide with them. I have to say, I think the guy on the right-hand side who's just cycled past is probably cheating. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say anything, but I do feel that it's a lot quicker to cycle up and down. Although, actually, to be fair, cycling up that hill would actually be really difficult. I wonder uh, how long it would take to cycle rather than run. You'll have to let me know in the comments whether you think it would take longer to run or whether you think it'll take longer to cycle. 
I'm guessing that cyclist is off to the mountain uh, biking area. So there is a mountain biking area. And you can see on the left-hand side as well, people starting to walk, which is fine. And you can see a nice little cute doggo there as well, who's loving life. He's, he wants to keep going. <laughs> So it's currently been 10 minutes and 27 seconds. It's turning into more of a flat now, so you can uh, let the lactic acid settle down again in your quad so you're not pushing up. We've still not seen the person in pole position yet, but when you do, you'll see them absolutely flying past because it is so quick going down compared to going up. It's actually incredible the difference. And there you can see some potholes on the ground. I don't know if you saw those just a second. There's first place as well. That is unreal. 11 minutes and they're already on their way downhill. But you can see them running down there. But there are the uh, potholes on the right hand side, which are actually frozen over as well. So that it was quite slippy on the day. So be careful, especially in the potholes, because you don't want to slip over. Coming downhill as well, because you're going so fast, it would be so easy to trip over. But this is such a nice shot right now. You can see how blue the sky was on the day. It was such a nice day to run. It was probably in November, I think, sort of middle to end of November. So for the weather to be like this, it was perfect. So we're just coming up to that mountain bikes on the left hand side near those meadows as well at the far end when we went through the course. So we're just running through there, a bit shaded in this sort of area, but we should see the U-turn coming up in just a moment. So the mountain bikes are just on the left there, and now we are heading round the U-turn. So it took us 14 minutes and two seconds to go uphill for two and a half kilometers. Now let's see how long it will take us to get back down. I've got a feeling we'll cut off at least a minute on the way back down, because it's such a nice feeling when you run down, you just take it nice and relaxed, which is a nice feeling, but I think that was also quite bad on my knees. I took longer strides as well, so I put a lot more pressure on my knees, but I definitely wouldn't recommend to do that. But yes, if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit that like button and also don't forget to subscribe if you're new. We do part run videos every week. The next few weeks is going to be volunteering, but you can also check out all of the other ones which I've ran in the worldwide park run playlist. But here we go. Let's get back into it and hopefully we can beat our 40 minute time going downhill. Now you've got to be careful because you see all the uh, little potholes are full with water and ice there on the left hand side but then on the right hand side you've got people running towards you so you've got to be very careful here not to run into anyone else and only take over if you can do a quick takeover. You don't want to be doing a slow takeover and getting in everyone's way. So we're just going in now for the overtake. I realised that I said takeover instead of overtake just then. And we've managed to get past them. 50 part runs though, fair play to them, well done. We're headed, we're closer to 25 actually now. We're on 23 park runs, so we're very close to 25. And I need to make sure that the 25th one is a good one. As you can see, some people on the left running on the grass. Maybe that was should have been a good idea. I maybe should have ran on the grass instead of staying on the hard standing to make it better for my knee, because that could have messed up my ACL a bit more. Just seen a push chair go past as well. So if you want to take the uh, push chairs with the run, which would be very impressive because you're running uphill two and a half kilometers with a push chair over speed bumps and things like that. So fair play to you guys who actually push them around because I don't know how you do it. Don't know how you do it, especially two and a half K going uphill. It's just doubling the uh, weight pretty much that you're having to put, go up and then going downhill there, you can just let go, I suppose. <laughs> So we're currently at 18 minutes and 35 seconds coming up towards that junction now where you turn right and head your way to a more of a steep downhill where you can speed up just a little bit more. A couple of things to note for the pinch point wise is the, the obviously the U-turn at the far end is a pinch point but apart from that there's not really many pinch points. The fact that that bit's gravel maybe does slow you down just that little bit, but there we go, turning up the junction. But this bit's actually uphill. I forgot this. There are little bits of sort of up downy hills, and this this little bit here is probably the final uphill of the run. So uh, this is the hardest bit, I'd probably say. 
because you're you're knackered already you just come downhill and now you're trying to push your way uphill before heading your way back down the other side So we've hit the top of that hill and now the rest is all downhill. We're trying to get sub 25, so fingers crossed we can beat 25 minutes. You can see that person there on the right hand side is flying down. Literally, some people looked as if they were going to trip over, I have to say, and I felt like I was going to trip over at some bit, so uh, don't go too quickly, otherwise you're going to face plant the floor. The guy on the right hand side as well, let me know in the comments if you have seen this video because I loved your singing. You were singing as we went down and I could to hear the music as well and I was like, oh this is great, this is great. <laughs> I got a little bit of background music whilst I ran because I completely forgot my AirPods, which wasn't ideal so I didn't have music playing whilst I was doing the run, but instead I had some singing which was perfect. Quick high five from the volunteer. We're almost there now, watching out for the speed bumps and the uh, potholes. And now it's going to be a bit of a steeper downhill, so this is where you can start picking up the pace a little bit more. We're close to the end now, the final downhill before doing the bend around this tree area and past the deer park. And then we're heading back towards the start slash finish line. So as you can see, we're beginning to speed up now, Go looking for some overtakes here as well to try and get sub 25. It's going to be a close one. I feel like it's going to be 24 minutes and something, but we'll have to see. Also, don't forget to let me know down in the comment section below if you have ever done Ashton Park, Ashton? Ashton Court Park Run before, and let me know in the comments what you thought of it. So we're at that final bend now, it's maybe a slight uphill here, I, can't, I couldn't remember this uphill at all, so it's got to be a gradual hill if it is a slight uphill, or it could be pretty much flat to be honest. But we've just come in around that bend now at the time of 23 minutes and 33 seconds, so we're trying to push for that 24 minutes, we're going to start speeding up now. And it's all opened up now, so you can see in the distance the finish line on the left hand side. There was quite a big funnel here as well, a few people overtaking me here right at the end as well. That guy is absolutely flying, I don't know if he was doing it that quick the whole way down. But here we go, coming up towards the end, 24 minutes and 6 seconds to go. The final sprint, people cheering you on that right hand side. The wind blowing in your face as well, it was such a nice run to be fair when you come downhill. The uphill's painful, but coming down downhill is great you can see the finish line here's the funnel coning to the cones and there we go we got a time of 24 23 so we managed to beat 25 minutes which i am very happy with and we managed to get a position of 109th as well absolutely knackered but yes yeah, a lovely run i definitely recommend going so that is the run so two and a half kilometers uphill followed by a two and a half kilometers downhill you'll have to let me know what you thought in the comments i thought it was quite cool to be fair something a little bit different i don't know if any of the other part runs do have that where it's just one big loop two and a half up two and a half down but that was definitely a really enjoyable run but it's not one for if you want to try and get your pb no chance of you getting your pb on that one maybe some people might think there is a chance because the downhill bit is a lot quicker but for me i would never get my pb on this run but it's a good one to do i think it was probably good training for your quads as well as you running up and downhill so any hill sort of training good work part run to do so all the pinch points to be wary of include the hills obviously so they're going to slow you down a lot followed by the potholes as well which are on the course the very busy start as well make sure to get right near the front if you want to get your best run for aston court and also don't forget that on the top end there is that u-turn as well which will slow you down before heading your way back down but it's quite a wide u-turn so it's not as bad as one of just a quick straight u-turn around the tree as usual thanks again to all of the people that volunteered without them we could not have done this run so thanks to all those and everyone was very nice and friendly too and as usual we've now hit the tips and tricks section so if you are going by public transport do make sure to get either the x3 or x4 bus number from the center number eight from the temple meads city center and number 505 from south Mead hospital clifton hot wells which all go to long ashton park and ride so all of this quite a difficult one to get to to be honest if you are going via public transport i saw a lot of people getting ubers and taxis to the location but they if you are going by car it is nice and easy to go by car because there is a big parking spot at the ashton court mansion so uh 
if you go in my car, it's nice and easy. But if you are driving, do make sure to download the Just Park app. I had that issue where I forgot to download it, slash I didn't know I needed to download it. And when I arrived, it took forever to download. So I was getting very stressed. I was gonna miss the start of the run. So make sure you download that before you go. I think parking's like about a pound, so it's not too expensive. And for those who enjoy the post-run coffee, everyone meets up at the Ashton Court Mansion in the courtyard where there is the Coach House Cafe. So that's meant to be very nice as well. So go check that out. So not much has changed with my GoPro stats. Number of park runs has increased to 10. The finish position stays the same as four. And then the times from Five Arches, Evesham and Summerdale Pavilion are still my fastest. This has been Ashton Court part run and if you did enjoy don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new and do enjoy this park run content but don't forget if you do want to go and watch any more part run videos we have got the Ormeo part run video from last week on the right hand side and then on the left hand side we have got the worldwide park run playlist which has all my park runs anyone that is a regular Ashton Court park run let me know down in the comments and also don't forget to add any of your tips to the comment section as well so I can pin them and everyone else can uh, view those comments and it'll help them in the future too I hope you all have a good rest of the week and weekend and if you are doing the park run on Saturday good luck and if you volunteer thank you very much too next week we are back to Pontfree Hill but this time volunteering so hope you enjoyed see you all in the next one